Hello fellow crafters, this is Lon Vader, back with a new tutorial. Now full disclaimer, this time I had some issues with the footage. Um, I'm using uh, very good LED lights. Unfortunately, my webcam has some, some trouble uh, capturing without flicker the image. It's got something to do with um, lights and video frequency. So I had to resort to other types of lights and it didn't turn out that good. And there was a, an issue also with the autofocus. Uh, in any case, the video was still exploitable, you know, the, um, the footage was still exploitable and I think the tutorial is very easy to understand nonetheless, but just keep that in mind. Um, we're soon gonna hit 10,000 subscribers, which is obviously pretty awesome. And while that will be the case, I'll um, open up a Patreon. So if you guys want to help me buy better equipment, uh, to have a better setting, uh, easier to, to, to capture, um, and you know, replace some broken equipment. Cause obviously, some of my equipments are showing signs of tear uh, through use. Uh, that will be possible, you know. In any case, the footage was still exploitable, and I hope the tutorial will be interesting. We're gonna craft a dark crystal inspired golem, modular dark crystal inspired golem. Let's go. So, if you guys aren't familiar with 9082 feature, the dark crystal. I strongly recommend it to you guys. It is a wonderful movie. Vibrant, organic, very tangible due to incredible work on large sets of environments and the incredible puppeteering. So it's a wonderful film. And I extend my appreciation of the franchise through the recent uh, show that aired on Netflix earlier this year. Uh, that is a prequel to the original film that is named Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. So that's where I took my inspiration for this build. The show is amazing. I think I loved it even more than the original feature, if it's possible. So full disclaimer, this tutorial implies a small spoiler. Nothing that would prevent you from enjoying the plot of the show. Nonetheless, we're going to work on one of the characters. So there you go. And the character I'm talking about is Lore, a golem awakened by one of the main characters during her quest. Lore is a bipedal construct. Uh, made out of heavy round stones engraved with arcane carvings, showing very animalistic behaviors. Infused with magic, he can actually dismember himself while running and keeping an integrity by reorganizing his shape on the fly, and you gotta love the asymmetry of his physique. I pretty much fell in love with the design of this construct as soon as I saw it, and knew I was gonna craft something inspired by it. So first I'm gonna do a small sketch, a schematic of the character. I wanted everything to be modular and be able to assemble them and move them to make a modular character. So I've decided to use some magnets to do this. At this stage I wasn't sure as how many magnets I would put on the final miniature, but at least I found some ideas. My objective was to have something as articulated and stable as I could. So this construct has a very bulky upper body, so I have to work with something light if I want the magnets to be able to sustain the weights. So I'm gonna use some aluminum to make the core of the body, the inside. Aluminum is light, but I want something resistant because I'm gonna put some paste on top of this. So I'm gonna compact the aluminum with my hands and with the back of my X-Acto knife to get something a bit more dense. I'm going to use four magnets that I'm going to glue on the torso. Now, if you're interested in such magnets, I'm going to put a link in the description of the video. They are either Spanish or Italian. In any case, I'm sure you can find some wherever you're living. There are many manufacturers of uh, magnets out there. So I'm gluing them to the inner aluminum core. Using aluminum, I'm also doing the core of another large piece that is going to be connected on the torso. Now what I'm going to do is take a tin can topper and cut some small rectangular parts. So obviously this kind of tin can topper can be very sharp, so be very careful when you cut. And make sure you get rid of the small shrapnels in a tissue of some kind before you throw it away. So I'm going to use some small pliers just to uh, flatten the pieces. I want to make sure they're going to be able to be glued easily on the different limbs. This will enable me to connect the limbs to the torso. As you can see, the magnets are pretty effective. Now we're gonna need some baking parchment paper and some water. 
I'm gonna do the external crust of the body with some epoxy paste. So you can take pretty much any type of modern clay or paste, provided it hardens really hard, because there's actually gonna be a very thin thickness of paste above the aluminum. I wanna keep it as light as I can, but it has to be resistant. So the idea is to envelop the inner core of aluminum with the paste. You can use water if you wanna smooth it better and to avoid sticky fingers. Might also consider using gloves to do this. As you can see, I'm now taking one of the limb core and I'm gonna attach the tin can fragments underneath it. And I just did the same process with the other limbs. So one of his arms is gonna be massive, a huge chunk of stone that could crush almost anything. A bit like Hellboy's right hand of doom. I'm really going for something very asymmetrical for this design. So now I'm gonna do the thigh of the construct. Make sure that the tin piece is at least as large as the magnet, otherwise the contact won't work very well. And I'm covering the different parts with epoxy, always using water to be able to sculpt them properly. Holds up pretty well. When everything is dry, I'm gonna remove some parts just to be able to set some stronger magnets. Now I broke some magnets in small bits to be able to do this. Just be very careful when you do this. Magnets are very brittle and very sharp. You don't want any fragment ending in your eye. Also make sure the magnets are strong enough, big enough. For the different limbs, here you can see I had to remove one piece and replace it with a bigger one. So now I'm trimming to get a better shape to the whole body. Now trimming epoxy will create a very light and very volatile uh, kind of dust. And this ain't good for your lungs. I didn't think about it at first, but very soon I used a vacuum cleaner just to make sure it would actually absorb uh, the dust. So as you can see, the character is building up nicely and you can already move the limbs to give him nice tenses. So now I'm going to dismember him because I have to cover up the different parts with a very thin final layer of epoxy just on top of the magnets. I'm going to make sure that the coverage is very thin on the magnet, but it will cover the junction between the magnets and the rest of the piece to make sure the connection between the piece and the magnet is as seamless as possible. As you can see here, I'm also gluing what's going to be the head of the construct. Using strong glue coupled with thin grain sand, the sand crystal will help the glue bond the two pieces together. And I'm going to start carving some cracks. Using a pencil, I'm going to draw the patterns of the arcane engravings that are going to be set on the body. Now the epoxy hardens too fast, so I was unable to do the engravings while the epoxy was still wet. But maybe if you use another type of modern clay that sets more slowly, you could be able to do this beforehand. I, on the other hand, ended up using my Dremel to carve in the details. When all the pieces are carved, I'm just gonna brush them with an old toothbrush. Just making sure there's no dust remaining in the cracks. Now I want to seal the pieces individually. For that I'm going to use some white acrylic paint mixed in with Mod Podge. And I use the Mod Podge meant for exterior, so it means it's going to be harder. I'm going for a 50-50 mix. You can base coat darker if you want. I usually base coat things lighter, because it works better when you do washes to get instant highlights with inks or such. So I'm going to cover all the pieces. Let this sit to dry. I'm not going for something too thick, but I definitely want the magnets to be set, to be glued to the rest of the piece. I don't want any of them to get loose. Now let's do the base. Now I like my bases to be heavy, so what I did was use this very big washer. I used some thin cardboard to make a platform. 
I'm gonna cut it and glue it onto the washer. I'm gonna trim the exterior to get a nice slope. And I'm gonna trim it to get something even. There you go. So I want my character to be stable. I want it to be modular. I want to be able to change his stance, but I want him to be stable. So what I'm gonna do is actually glue one of the parts. One leg is gonna be glued, definitely glued onto the base. And the rest, well, the rest will be able to set it as we want. So first I thought that strong glue would do the trick, which was a bad idea because the glue actually sticked to the base coat and it ended up tearing up. So as you'll see later on at the end of the tutorial, I ended up drilling a hole and putting up a paper clip inside of the calf and inside of the base to make a stronger bond. You definitely want this piece to be resistant since it's gonna hold the rest of the miniature onto the base. As you can see, you can already have some pretty dynamic poses. So I decided to set up some stones, some round stones onto the base, just, you know, to remind of the character. Of course, you can customize your own base as you want. Just make sure if you use stones to get a clear path for the other leg, you want him to be able to stand and move his legs and be set in different stances. You don't want the stones to be, you know, in the way. I'm going to use some PVA glue around the main rock formations and use different sized sand just around the main stones. Taking the excess off. Then I'm brushing off the excess. You know, some stones are going to be weirdly shaped and weirdly glued. Another coat of PVA glue on the rest of the surface. And this time I'm going to use some fine sand just for the main dirt. Now let's paint it up. So I wanted it to look like stone. I'm going for an army painter dark stone uh, color and I wanted to mix in some blue to have some nice color variation. I think I was influenced by the first shots in which you can see the character in the show. The stone appeared very blue in the show due to the light of the, the environments. So I kind of overdid the blue. It looked very beautiful, but it didn't look like stone. So I decided to repaint all the pieces in gray. It looked a lot more like stone. It's just a minor issue, but which is pretty much a shame really, because I had a hard time uh, redoing the highlights that I pretty much instantly got when I did the blue watch the first time. But hey, at least it looked like stone. So I ended up with a dark wash. I'm using Army Payton Dark Tone for this. And I ended up with a dry brush of mostly white. You can't see it on the footage, but I also did some slight variation on the rock using some brown, you know, just dabbed, uh, sort of dabbed dry brush and some very slight brass dry brush just to get, you know, these kind of metallic shine you can get on stone. Sometimes that are li there's just a little shimmer of ore on stone. So there you go. I'm using some dried out brown tea to make the twigs that are gonna be set on the floor, giving it the appearance of a forest ground. Here, as you can see, the leg broke, so you can see me drilling the inside of the calf of the leg in order to thread the paper clip to create a stronger bond with the base. It was actually the best idea. I should have done this at the start. Then I varnished the different pieces with a Citadel Mate varnish. But I forgot some minor details. I want my construct to be able to grapple things to a certain extent. So I decided to add a tiny hand on the left arm. I did that using a very small rounded pebble. And I made the fingers out of toothpicks hands. I also gave him the two goofy teeth uh, he has in the show. It gives him a more animal look. Looks a bit like a hippo. And there you go, we got ourselves a modular golem. He's actually really easy to assemble, and to change his stance is very easy as well. You can make him run, being inquisitive or surprised. When taking damage, he could be knocked back. Ready for retaliation, swinging his very large right arm, ready to strike. 
and bashing down his huge arm on an unfortunate miniature. You can also disassemble him, put on the pieces on the base and then assemble it when the moment comes. This makes for great gameplay. Characters could find different pieces of rock someplace and just to see them being animated maybe even far from each other and regrouping, that could be cool. He's really easy to assemble. Since these are magnets, you can actually reassemble the construct the way you want, getting some pretty funky designs. So I hope you guys liked the tutorial. If you did, please, you know, like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later for another tutorial. Lon Vader signing off.